You can steal off everyone, can't we, Derek? Buddy Rich and all that. Yeah, I mean, Buddy Rich is Buddy Rich. There's no one to kind of touch that kind of style. Gene Cooper, Gene Cooper brushes, there's no one to touch it. Eric Delaney? Oh, if you want Timberlake's, then you've got Eric Delaney. He's good, he's good, though. Yeah, but there's, you can learn something off every drummer. I don't I mean, I like Tony Murray and Steve Grant. I mean, there's, there's endless, isn't there? Derek. Derek. Just shows how low you can sing. You know? Told me to say that. You Um, I'm using ambassadors at the moment uh, because they suit these drums. I've got a a sonic kit exactly like Derek's, but it's the bigger version. It's the, the Danny of that kit, the Sonalite. And on that kit, I use CS heads with a flat spot. It used to be a solar spot, they don't make them anymore. Because it's a heavier head. But these heads are, you know, they just, I don't like, uh, I'm not too keen on pinstripes. But it depends on the session. If you're doing like a, a jazz or a light session, then it's better to use pinstripes. But for this kind of thing, and, and the people I'm working with at the moment, the ambassadors, nice, heavy, good sound. And he gets them for nothing. Who would have charged me the other day? <laughs> what, what advice would you give to someone who wanted regular sessions? Is it what you know or who you know? It's who you know. It's uh, to do session work. You can fall lucky, you can get one good session, which is a, it's, it's a hit, the album might be a hit or something. And then the producer will get you back the artist will get you back and then the word goes around that you know oh, this guy done the business um, plus it's very rare these days drummers and studios non-existent it's all single clouds or whatever and drum machines and I wish I could get back into session I mean I haven't been in a studio for three years I'm endangered species <laughs> He's doubling up on the bass drum. Okay. You're right, I think comfort is the uh, most important uh, when you're playing. Uh, for instance, I think uh, it's very important for drummers uh, to sit correctly. A lot of drummers are hunched over the kit and have to stretch all over the place to, to, to reach everything. But today's drums are made so that everything comes to you comfortably. You should be sitting down as you sit down at the table uh, when you're having a meal and everything should be within range. No, no uh, strain, no stress, nice and relaxed. And the stool probably the most important part of the kit, I would say. The pedal? The stool. Oh, your stool? The stool, I'd say. If you're not sitting comfortably, you won't play the pedal. You have to have that. I've been, if I go away, the only things I take, besides my stick, is my pedal. Um, because that is, that's your connection with the, with the drum, as opposed to the sticks as well. That's what you, you are playing. It's your body hitting that drum, it's through your foot, so the pedal is very important. No, it's not. It's a cam cause of string, uh, like a, a four of them. Do they still make them? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's got them in stock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, they're just very, they're nice and light and fast for me. 
uh, I can't get the ring was uh, just too heavy. The really heavy paddles. Should we do a lot of Roman, Dave? Yes, any more questions now before uh, Terry goes into his next stanza? Any more questions? Let's tell it. Anything at all? Yes, yes Tony. Tony. Do you practice one thing before you go on stage? Do I practice? Does, it, does Terry practice no. at all before he goes on stage? No. No, I don't do that at all. It's, uh, it gives, when I get on the stage, uh, it gives me more ready to go. If I sat in the dressing room, besides driving all the mess of the vinyl at the wall, you know. <laughs> uh, when I get on stage, then I just if I say go for it. Somebody else for you, John. How would you see yourself in the future, sort of, enclosed in this sort of sequences of the game? Because you want to be a drum player? Well, I've always played the drums. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, in the studios these days, it's all drum machines and some clans. But I am basically a live drummer. Um, in the last two years, no, he couldn't make it tonight. I played with like, Ray Charles, Chuck Berry, the Everly Brothers. All these people are all that sort of 50s, early 60s rock and roll because that is more or less my style. So uh, I'm not a modern, as I say, modern studio drummer, which is working to click tracks. I get I get gigs because of the way I play. You know, my feel more than my uh, technical ability. Uh, one last question for the board, Terry. You're going, are you? No, no, no. Peter, Peter, you know, was an influence of Gail. Your father's a musician. How much of an influence have you had on your life as a, as a musician? Oh, enormous. Yeah. He bought me my first kit. Okay. No, my dad, obviously, um, my son was here this afternoon and he was playing Derek's kit. And Gail was just trying to play around, and he started trying to copy Gail. So he was here today. I mean, he didn't do a good job, <laughs> but I mean that's what I did. I went along with my dad to his shows in the afternoon. He was setting up equipment or something like that, and I just found the drum kit. Oh, you that dad? I remember he was a fourteen-year-old by the we had to start somewhere. Any, any more questions? Any more questions for over here? Yes, yeah. Terry, if I felt drummer for Nice Streets, why did you use Sprego Moraki? Because of my big month. No, we were, we were in Montserrat for months and months. I know it sounds idyllic and wonderful to be on a desert island with palm trees. And, but you're in the studio, and I didn't do anything for about 12 days because they were using a drum machine and whenever I went in it was just a copy of what was on the drums, what was on the drum machine. And one day I just said to Mark, I said, you know, this, is, this isn't me. It doesn't sound like me, Terry Williams, playing the drums. So he said, you know, I'm the first plane out tomorrow. So that's why all my... And we shared it as well, on Money for Nothing. I do all the Tom Tom films, and it's Omar doing the straight beat. But Omar is again, like we were saying about the studio, he's more of a modern click track, he can work to click tracks. He's not bad, is he? You know, yeah, he's, he's great. But I mean, the straight are just you, Jeff Picaro. Because you ask Jeff Picaro to give you 99 beats to the minute, and he will. And two hours later, you ask him, he'll do it again. I mean, that frightens me. So. Anyone else? Any, uh, any more questions? Hmm? The gentleman there. Is there problems with my hands? They get in the way sometimes. No, not really. Um, you mean injuries or...? Yeah? I had a... What did they call it? Tunnel, tunnel syndrome or something, which I was getting pins and needles. Is that what you mean? Yeah, it's like a tennis elbow. And you can also get that from using 
um, Simmons drums, or, or you know, electronic drums. It's like playing the tabletop. You don't don't get any response off the hands, and you can tear the tendons. But hopefully, not too many. Yeah, that's generally for, through overplaying, having to compete with very loud bass players, who <coughs> just have to turn up the knob, and you've got to put everything uh -huh. into it. You listening to that now, Dave? <laughs> Incidentally, talking of uh, Ray Charles just now, you may be interested to know that Ray Charles was uh, taught the piano by Stevie Wonder. Try it again. Oh, I'll try again. Anyway, what I'd like to do now, I'd like to drag up uh, two local musicians, Brian Breeze and Dave Bell. Um, He's going to slaughter me now, Brian, I know. To try to... The drummer should listen to the rest of the band. Or vice versa as well, the band should listen to the drummer. Um, and we're just going to do something where Brian will work with Dave. He'll do little things and Dave will answer him back. And then he'll do it to me. Uh, and I'll try to answer him back. Some ways this can be scary. Not tonight though, Brian. Can you do that now? Yeah, sure, sure. Right, let's welcome uh, once again, first of all, the great Di Bell. Di Bell. Indeed. Di Bell. And Mr. Brian Breeze. Brian Breeze.